So for this first one, how do you find the missing angle? So 180 minus 118 degrees, 27 minutes, 41 seconds. So we do have to fill in zeros here. Zero minutes, zero seconds. And of course, zero minus 41 can't be done, so we're going to have to borrow. We got to skip all the way over here to make this 179, and this is going to become what? 60. Now, of course, we need to get here yet, so we have to borrow again. So that becomes 59, and then this becomes 60. And now we can subtract 60 minus 41 is 19 seconds. 59 minus 27 is 32 minutes. And 179 minus 18 is 61 degrees. How many of you had that? And of course your calculator will do it if you typed in 180 minus and then entered the, the degrees, minutes, seconds. So over here, what are we going to do? Subtract from 90 degrees. So again, I fill in the zero minutes, zero seconds. And we're going to borrow, so this is going to be 89. This is going to be 60, which we'll borrow again to make it 59. And then this will be 60. And we can subtract. 60 minus 9 is 51. 59 minus 52 is 7 minutes. You can either write it as just 7 or 0, 7. Um, some of your uh, programming, if some programs that enter angles, you have to enter it as 0, 7, like that. And 89 minus 27 is 62. Any questions on finding those missing angles? What's that? Okay, they're all equal to each other. Seven, nine, ten. So we've got ten angles, four of them are equal. Okay, so what we have there, we have a ten sided figure. So we've got one, two, three. Four, five, six. Those angles are all the same. And we got these angles that are all the same. And those angles are given to you what? One hundred and fourteen forty. One hundred and fourteen degrees forty minutes. One forty. Like that. Oh, seven, eight, and nine. I was, I was asking for seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. The fourteen forty is the total, but I was looking at the one eighteen fourteen twenty three. That's what I needed. So it's one hundred eighteen fourteen twenty three is what each of those angles is, and those four are the same. <clears throat> This is a 10-sided figure, or 10-angled figure is really more important. So what that means is it is 180 times 10 minus 2 is 8. 180 times 8 is 1,440 degrees. How do you figure that? The formula for the angle sum is called the interior angle sum of a figure. Is the number of angles minus 2? times 180 degrees. So this has 10 angles. So it's 180 degrees minus, or times 10 minus 2. So it's 180 degrees times 8.
So we have the 118, 1423, and there are four of those. So we're going to multiply this by four. 23 times four is 92 seconds, which I'm going to carry the one minute. I subtract out that 60 seconds for the minute, and I get 32 seconds left. 4 times 14 is 56, plus 1 is 57, so that's just 57 minutes. And 4 times 118 is 472, right? Degrees? So that's the total for these four angles. So we are now going to subtract that from the 1440. So I'm going to borrow. This is going to become 1439. This will be 60. We'll borrow again to make it 59. This is 60. So now we subtract. 60 minus 32 is 28 minute, or seconds. 59 minus 57 is 2 minutes. And 1439 minus 72. Now we're going to do this all brute force. 9 minus 2 is 7. Borrow from the 4, make that a 3. This is a 13, a 6, and 9. So 967 degrees, 2 minutes and 28 seconds left. And that is split up between... those six angles. So we have to take that 967, 2 minutes and 28 seconds, we're going to divide it by 6. So 967 divided by 6 is 161 degrees. 161 times 6 is 966. So we subtract, we have one degree. Before I bring down the two minutes, what do I have to do? My one degree becomes 60 minutes. Bring down the two and I have 62 minutes. Six goes into 62 10 times. 10 times six is 60 minutes. Subtracting these into two minutes. I convert that into 120 seconds before I bring down my 28. And I now have 148 seconds. Six goes into 148. Uh, 24 times, 24.7, I believe. So it's 161 degrees. 10 minutes, 24.7 seconds. What do you think? Will the fun? Why are you dividing by 6? Because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of these angles that are all the same. Okay. What's that? Why are you doing it that way? Why did I do it that way? Well, well I mean, why you, are you using minutes for one and then like everything? Well, they gave that they gave you this figure. That they gave you that these these four angles are the same, right? And that those four angles each equal that. And, and they gave you that the total of all ten of the angles was fourteen forty. So we had to figure out, we had to take, we could subtract the 118, 14, 23. We could have subtracted it four times if you wanted to, but we multiplied it by four and subtracted it all at once. And that gave you what was left over. So then what was left over had to be divided up by those six angles. Now I admit you guys are most likely going to do that in your calculator and it'll be a lot quicker. But.
Well, they so those are all equal to each other. Then the other four are equal to the one fourteen. Or the one eighteen. Well, just those last four are equal, though. There's no equal sign between the first six and the last four. It says those first six are equal, and then the last four are equal to the number. Okay. So what our goal for today is, it should be a fairly easy topic for us, is we're going to look at measuring angles. And our simplest, simple list tool for measuring angles is a standard protractor. Just a few small things that we want to look at. Most of you have seen or have a clear plastic protractor. It looks something like this. On bottom, somewhere, some of you it's on bottom. I prefer the ones that line up on bottom like that. But many of them don't line up at the very bottom. They actually line up something like this. They'll have a hole there actually. And they come out like this. What that means is the protractor really doesn't start until above that line. So this spot here in the middle is where the vertex of your angle goes. And then around the outside, this is marked 0 on each side. This is marked 90 up top. And this would be labeled 10 and 350, 20 and 340, not 340, how about I get this right? 10 and 170, 20 and 160, 30 and 150, 40 and 140, and so on. So when we set these up, when we put a, go to measure an angle, we will take... Once the number the vertex goes here, and one side of the angle has to line up with one of the zero points, either this side or this side. Are we going to um, yeah, I have I think one or two in here I can let you guys use. So if you have one at home, it would be to your benefit to bring one in. Yeah, most of what you guys are going to use is going to use a bevel protractor is what we'll look at next. Well, you're still going to have to check angles. You're still going to have to check angles on the production line. Now with a protractor, you'd be using a bevel. You'd be using a universal bevel. You're going to use a bevel protractor is going to be the next thing we're going to look at. So anyway, this angle here, to, to read it, there's two sets of numbers. Just like over here, there's two sets of numbers over here. It'd be 10 and 170, 20 and 160, and so on. To figure out which set of numbers we're going to read, you have to ask yourself, is this angle bigger or smaller than 90 degrees? Now, 90 degrees, of course, is a right angle. An angle that is smaller than 90, less than 90 degrees, is what we call acute. If it's an acute angle, less than 90, of course, we have to use the smaller numbers. More than 90 degrees is what we call obtuse. So obtuse, obviously, bigger than 90 degrees, we'd have to use the larger numbers. So the angle I have in red, is it acute or obtuse? It's acute. Well, that's a very good point. Adam says it depends on which angle you're looking at. If we're looking at the inside angle, it's acute. If we're looking at the outer angle, that's technically not an obtuse angle because it's more than 180 degrees. Obtuse is generally considered between 90 and 180. That would be considered an exterior angle. Now, there are some cases where that would be the angle of importance. 
But when we're measuring with a protractor, we can't measure angles over 180. So we're going to stick. It either has to be acute or obtuse. So this one would be the acute. And yeah, that's exactly how I remember it. It's just like you were saying, it's acute. You know, acute is little. So this is acute. So this would be the smaller numbers. It would be the 50 degrees instead of this would be 130 would be the other label there. So we would call this one 50 degrees. So uh, if we had one coming in from this side, here's our vertex and coming out like this. Would we read the 20 or the 160? The 160, because that one is obtuse. Now, like I said, for you guys, you're not going to be reading a lot of simple protractors. You guys are going to be using what's called the universal bevel protractor. The universal bevel protractor is set for measuring surfaces. It has that same scale. You can see 20, 30, 40, and it's got the 10 divisions in between, so you can get to the individual degrees. I don't know if that's big enough you guys can see it there or not. I don't know if I can make it. If I make it bigger, it's going to get blurry. But This is considered a vernier scale. Um, the way this reads, the zero here, just like on our vernier uh, calipers, the zero on the vernier scale is where we read the main scale. So here is zero. If we look at that, that's up here. This is 40, 45, 46, 47, 48. It is between 47 and 48. So we would go with the 47 degrees. Boy, when I'm zoomed in, my pen is huge, isn't it? Um, so anyway, that's between 47 and 48, it's 47 degrees. Now we've got a vernier scale going in either direction. How do we know which direction that we need to go in? Well, the main scale is increasing going in that direction, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. Well, the vernier scale then has to be read in the direction, in the increasing direction of the main scale. So we're going to read the vernier direction on this side. So we need to see which one lines up. And as I look here, this was almost a 48, which tells me it's probably going to be way up here. This is the one that lines up right here. Now you can see this is minutes down here. And it's only labeled in fives. So this is 45 here. This would be 50. 55 is the one that lines up. To, to within five minutes. This is really, to get down to a single minute, you, would be, you wouldn't be able to hardly distinguish between the markers. Are we going to see uh, on a, um, what's that called? Like a scale that's like um, plan plate? On plan plate, how to measure that? Yes. Um, that's one of the things you would use this for is measuring a sign plate. Are we going to do that? I don't know if I actually have specific pictures. I can look to see if I have some. I just, that just happened to me at work where I had to figure out an angle with minutes. Yeah. Generally, this, you've got your sign bar sitting there. I guess it's a chart. Yeah. Well, usually your ends of your sign bar. Do you have a? Is your sign bar have a enlarged end so the end is larger than the surface? No. So you can put you. You could actually put your. Here's what happened. It ended up we didn't need the exact angles. Okay. Yep. So that, that turned out where I didn't have to use that, but in some circumstances, I was like, you're going to have to. Sure. If you have one where the end is not enlarged, so some sign, sign bars just come out and the end is rounded like that. It's a half circle at the end of the sign bar. Um, doesn't work great for doing, you know, gauge block buildups on the end of it like this. So normally if you're using a gauge block buildup like this, you'd have an enlarged end. But anyway, if you have one that does not have an enlarged end, all you have to do is you set your bevel here and then down here, and you just run it down far enough that it, you, know, you can tell that it's flush to the surface. If you have that enlarged end on it, oops, so your bevel, I'm going to shrink this down. Your bevel would be, that bottom portion would be touching the gauge box? Yes, this would be touching the gauge blocks right here, and then this would be on the surface of the sign bar up here. 
Now, obviously, this is not this angle here is not going to be the same as this angle. It's going to be the complement. So you'd have to once you measured that and got that angle, you'd have to subtract it from 90 degrees. Most of your bevel protractors are set up though so that they read both. They read the angle and its complement, so you can get the two angles or the angle and its supplement as well. If you have the enlarged end on your sign bar like that, and that's usually what's used when you're doing a gauge block buildup, what you have to do is you have to get um, a parallel or a, a p any piece of stock that is uniform thickness and you place that on here and then you put your your bevel on top of that so that's a little trickier to use because you've got to do something here to get it out past that enlarged end of the sign bar so it'll be parallel to this angle yeah to this edge but it has to be uniform. That's why they, they, they actually make parallels that are precision parallels. Because most of your stock material um, is not a uniform thickness. Most of your sheets have a pretty good variation in thickness. More than what you'd like to think, at least. Here is just a, a view of different ways that the bevel protractor can be used. You know, here is just marking a... This would be one way that it would be used for what you're talking about for the sign bar. This would go down, this would be the edge going down around the gauge blocks. So you'd be standing that up on end. Right. And this would be the edge that's going on the top of the surface of the sign bar. Um, the reason for they have one edge beveled like this, you can this here actually slides back and forth on this main bar. So you can slide it down to the end so that you can fit it into an inside angle. Of course, you're limited. You cannot measure inside angles that are smaller than that. So you have to measure inside angles. I believe those are usually 135 degrees. So you can measure inside angles that are 135 degrees or greater doing it that way. So the sign bar is used for like getting your angles? Getting a precise and angle on a jig. The sign plate would be for placement on yeah. those angles. Yes. Here you can see we can get angles between surfaces. I mean, that one's pretty obvious. It's the same as this one, just we've got a gap in there. Yeah. I know he has at least, I think, was he have a five inch down there? Sign bars are usually five or ten. He's got a ten inch. Yeah. Sure. So you can see, I'm not going to go through the individual setups here, but you can see there are a lot of different positions that you can use the bevel protractor in for measuring angles. So it's a very, and even here, this is one that a lot of people don't think of. You're not going to get tight down into that angle, but you don't have to. You just have to measure the surfaces of that angle, even out away from the vertex. So here, even though we're measuring way out here and way out here, that's going to be the same, same angle out here as it would be right in at the vertex. So that bevel protractor is has a lot of different places it can be used. And of course, it can be used for checking for square. So if I wanted to read this one, this one here is actually marked. And if I put one on a quiz where you have to read a bevel protractor, I will actually generally mark it like this with an arrow. So if I go to read this one, of course, we read we start by reading it where the zero is. So the zero is at what number up here on the main scale? This is, you got it, 25, 26, 27. It's between 28 and 29, so it's 28 degrees. Which direction are we going to read it to, the left or the right? The right, because that's where the main scale increases. This arrow is indicating which one of these lines up, which vernier line lines up with the main scale. Because that's what you have to do is you have to figure out which one of these lines here lines up with one of these up on the main scale. So that arrow is indicating this one lines up, which is the 15. So that's 15 minutes. So that's 28 degrees, 15 minutes. So which one would it apply that you read the other one? Where you'd read it going this direction? Um, you never would. You always read it going in the increasing direction. But you can see here it's zero. So if you wound it back this way, now the zero is over here. Now we'd have to read the vernier scale going that way. Because it goes 10 degrees going each way from zero. So it all depends on whether it's an obtuse angle or an acute angle. And actually not even too acute. It can be bigger than 180 degrees. So then you're reading on the other side of it. 
So this one, this one's a tough one to read. My zero right here is between 51 and 52. So that's 51 degrees. Am I going to read it to the left or to the right? The left. And we see here, this one is marked as lining up. That's 45 minutes. So it's 51 degrees, 45 minutes. How about this one? The zero lines up with... Careful. 13. 13. It's between the 13 and 14. And we're going to read it to the right on this one. Now, I didn't mark which one lines up. Can you tell? 30. The 30 looks to be lined up. 15 looks really close, but slightly off. I'd say 30 is the one that's lined up. So 13 degrees, 30 minutes. That, by the way, is why I put an arrow on your quiz, because the print quality on our printer, our copier, is not good enough that you can get a fine line. I mean, these, if you ever look at one, they have very, very fine, narrow lines. Um, our print quality on our printer, you, you wouldn't be able to see it if I had those fine lines on there, so I had to enlarge the lines. And when you enlarge the lines, it gets a little fuzzy as to which one lines up. There's like three or four of them that look like they line up. So that's why I put an arrow on your quiz. I would have an arrow like this indicating that that's the one that lines up with the vernier. So you know where to read the vernier. We're going to want to protest this. It wouldn't hurt. Like I said, I've got one for that you can use for quizzes. But it wouldn't be bad. I mean, they're like two bucks. Yeah, I know. So this one. What do I read on the main scale? How many degrees? 45. It's 45. Very good. And then to figure out what lines up here. No, no, no. Looks like the 45. Uh, you know what? The 30 might be right. The 45 looks like it might be slightly off. Yeah, I would say it's the 30. Sorry, Josh. The 45 looks pretty close. Again, that's why I would mark it on the quiz so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, these are pretty blurry. So, how many whole degrees here? 42, at careful. This is 35 here. 36, 37. So now we're reading this side because we're increasing going that way. Is it the 10? And I say the must, well, no, it can't be the 10 because we're more than halfway. No, the 60 don't line up. It has to be the 10. None of the others are even close. No, the 10 way farther out. The 10 right here? Yeah, the 60 is almost right in the middle of the two lines. The 60 on the other side, that's 60. Look at that. Like this one? No, uh, that's 60. That's yeah. not even close. Yeah, we're reading it on this side. The 10 is really, really close. Nothing else looks really close. I would have expected. You're telling me this 60. Okay. Yeah, I'm telling you that. <laughs> the 35 is off by quite a bit too it, I mean we're going to have to go with 10 there but the 10 doesn't make much sense because the 0 is more than halfway between the yeah it should be like 40 35 40 would be what I, I would guess is where it would be at but the 35 and 40 and 45 don't line up at all so we will trust our reading there even though it sucks so how about this one? How many degrees? Looks like 80. We're between 80 and 81. So we're reading this side. What lines up? Fifty looks like to me. Now this is where I had told you guys before. When I read a vernier micrometer or a caliper, I always tip it and look at it like this. So I'm staring down the lines. This here, obviously, you can't because it's on the screen, but that always helps me to see which ones line up. You can, it's easier to see little, you know, jogs in the line that way. Um, this is 90 here, so we're reading. We're coming in up to 90 from both directions, but the zero is here, so this is the scale we're reading. Is this side of the 90? But yeah, it does. It goes. It approaches 90 from both sides. So at some point, there's a zero that goes 10, 20 in both directions. 
there's also a 90 that has to converge from both directions. Um, these are set up, they're on a complete circle. This would be 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 0 degrees, and 0 degrees. So then this is 10, 20, 30, 60, 50, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 80, 70, and back down. So how about this one? Where do we read the main scale? Okay, we're going to read the vernier to the right. On the main scale, how many degrees do we have? 22, and which one lines up? This one's so blurry. I'd say probably the 20. You're right. And then the bat last one, how many degrees? One. It looks like she's dead on 70. So there we go. So like I said, these only read down to five minutes. Now we were calculating to minutes and seconds. That's literally 300 times more fine than what this is reading. To read anything below a five minute angle, five minutes of an angle, have you guys ever heard of an optical comparator? Did you say that? Okay. Oh, sure. Um, do you guys still have one? Okay. Gotcha. Do you still have one down in the shop here? I know they used to, but they, I don't know if, wasn't sure if they were going to keep it or not. To get anything finer than that, you have to get that optical compare, which really enlarges stuff. I mean, you can take a thousandth of an inch up to like, it looks like a half an inch on there. Um, that's about the only way to get anything finer than that. And you can see even getting down to five minutes is really kind of fine, hard to read. Well, see, you use the optical comparator at first, I got my angle, which was like five degrees and something minutes or whatever. Yep. And then he was like, well, well, if you don't, if you can't get on that, he said you can trig it out and you measure the two diameters and the cotangent. Sure. And it was, and that's when you got the lead. And... Yeah. Were they going down to less than five minutes? It was. No, not less than five minutes. Okay. I was going to say that not many places I know of around here that even go down to five minutes. Most of them are ten minutes is where they round to. Like I said, the angle is down to one Yeah. He just wanted you to practice? Yeah, just to know how to do that properly. Sure. Do they make speed squares at all down to minutes? Um, no, most speed squares I know of are just down to the degree. And even then, they're really only good to five degrees. Yeah. You got to be steady and you got to. Yeah. So, in that packet I gave you yesterday, I believe it still goes up to page 275. Um, page 275, 1 through 16 is reading protractors and bevel protractors.